Hi, everyone. Yeah, so um, I feel really conscious about my shoe game being up here with David and Plum. Uh, it's a really difficult crowd to hit, and now everyone's looking at my shoes, so this was a mistake for my icebreaker. Uh, so my name is Scott David. Thank you for the introduction. Um, I'm an editor-in-chief here at Lead Dev. That's two journalists in one block. That's probably too many journalists. <laughs> Um, I've been covering the software industry for the best part of a decade, and in my role here now as Editor-in-Chief, it's really about looking across the industry, seeing what's going on, and then trying to translate that into how it's impacting all of you. And I'm going to talk about some of that work for a couple of minutes up here this morning. Um, so as a journalist, I tend to think of the world in terms of headlines. It's a really bad way to think about the world, but it's just a nature of the job. This was one of my favorite headlines of the last couple of years, both in our personal and professional lives. This was in February 2022. Cast your mind back to then, I know, not a great time. We were all coming out of the pandemic. We were promised the land of milk and honey. Everyone was saying it was going to be the return of the roaring 20s. And instead, we got this. This was the wave after wave of layoffs that we saw after COVID-19 hitting the tech industry. These peaked in Q1 of 2023, where 170,000 people in tech lost their jobs in one quarter alone. You've got my first headline here of this talk, which comes from The Drum. Tech and media uh, layoffs point towards greater disruption in 2024, particularly in AI. This is going to be a theme of this talk, unfortunately. So we also got headlines like this, the end of zero interest rates. We had the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank. We had all of this significant impact hitting the industry where the amount of money sloshing around that we'd all become very accustomed to started to dry up a little bit. And that naturally had an impact on everyone in this room. Um, and then we also had this curveball come out of nowhere, which was this insane generative AI hype cycle. You were all tasked with investigating how to use these tools. You were trying to assess the risk of something that you cannot assess the risk of. You had to try and work out how to build AI into your products, and you were getting pressured from above and below. So what we really wanted to do was we wanted to go out and we wanted to understand how all of this stuff was actually impacting all of you. We wanted to know how much stress these changes were putting you under. We wanted to get a clearer sense of how organizations were changing. We wanted to know what you were starting to prioritize, deprioritize. So we did some research. We went out, and 1,107 of you responded to our survey in March and April earlier this year, primarily people managers, but we had everything from engineers all the way up to CTOs. We primarily got responses from Europe, UK, and 32% here in the United States. And we also got 602 qualitative data points that Lena primarily uh, sifted through. Thank you, Lena, for doing that. We've got one of those up on the screen later in this talk. So the headlines, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flash up a few headlines that we saw over the last couple of years, and then I'm going to tell you a little bit about how our data maybe shines a new light on that headline. So headline number one, Salesforce cuts 10% of workforce, hired too many people through pandemic. We saw a ton of headlines like this during this period. Basically, all of the big tech CEOs finally came out and admitted that they had overhired during the pandemic. They would got a bit excited, and they started talking about resets, about pivots, about correcting for over-exuberance. And obviously, this had an impact on all of you. So what did we see in our data? Well, we saw a similar picture. You'll see here that 70% um, of large companies, so a thousand plus, experienced some kind of budget cuts. You saw the layoffs here really heavily um, uh, down towards the bottom of the graph here for those larger companies where you were uh, having the highest propensity of a layoff. There was still hiring happening. We kept hearing about it, but it was mostly at smaller companies that were still scaling through this. Maybe they'd got their funding round at like the perfect time just before all of this hit. You also had some budget increases at those companies, but really that was the story. It was those kind of two ends of the scale, and if you were in a larger company, you were more likely to be impacted by these big macroeconomic waves that were happening. We also saw this really interesting thing of like push and pull during that period. Two years is a really long time in tech, and we saw 7% of you had experienced both layoffs and hiring increases during that period. It really shows just how like up and down this industry can be. Now, headline number two is actually loads of headlines. Um, basically, we kept hearing about this thing, like the demise of the middle manager, 
Um, it was a really common theme during the time, especially when all the layoffs were happening. And Lena and I were really keen to try and understand whether this was actually happening. So we asked people, like, have your manager roles at your organization has changed? And 62% hadn't actually changed the makeup of their like, management levels during this time, um, which means that 38% had changed. 18% had actually increased, probably at those smaller companies that I mentioned earlier. And then 20% decreased, probably at those larger companies. So then we asked those larger companies, the people who had, uh, sorry, we asked those people who had seen a decrease, where had those decreases hit on the management levels? And really predominantly, you'll see here that it was middle management and line management. 66%, so the biggest pr uh, proportion was in middle management, and you'll see that that wasn't offset by increases. So net, 22% um, were actually being impacted by middle management. So there was a shrinking happening there. Upper management were the most um, protected from these changes, so only 20% decreased, 30% increased, and then line management kind of leveled out. There were some cuts and there were some increases. So there was a bit of a shrinking of middle management during this period. No wonder we saw so many headlines. Headline number three, tech companies ax 34,000 jobs since start of the year and pivot to AI. Everyone was pivoting to something. Most people were pivoting to AI and the workforces around you, the teams that you were working with had to change accordingly. So what did we see? Well, we saw that tech continues its love affair with the reorg. Actually, the love affair with the reorg had only got more intense over this period. 66% of companies had done at least one reorg during this time. We also saw that 48%, so half of people, had experienced some sort of major leadership change in their organization. And then we got some responses like this. How about AI for the C-suite? Let's replace them with an LLM. At least those can explain their decisions. <laughs> We got quite a few responses like this. It's always great when you're anonymous, you can say what you really think and say it with your whole chest. We also saw that half of you were experiencing at least four major changes during this period, and 18% of you experienced six major changes. And a major change was anything from a strategy change to a reorg, to a round of layoffs, to a budget cut. That's like a lot of change, and that was obviously going to start impacting people. And headline number four from Inc., Tech employees are burned out, and this time they need more than empty promises. Tech and startup employee morale is in the tank. Quiet quitting is through the roof, and here's why. This is the part that was impacting all of you. 71% of engineering leaders during this time reported an increase in scope. They might have got a greater area of responsibility. They might have acquired some more reports. They might have to work across a broader range of teams. 41% of managers acquired more direct reports. Those people had to go to somewhere. And then 35% of leaders started working more hours. This is where this risk of burnout starts to increase. People are starting to pick up the slack, doing more with less, David. You can't really do it. Um, so this is where the impact of scope increases goes. It lands on probably your shoulders. And lastly, um, what we didn't hear, Lena and I were really interested by this like, thing that we had heard about where people, because they, their roles and responsibilities were changing, were they getting more hands-on? Were they getting back to coding? Were they doing more technical work? We were hearing this kind of here and there, and we wanted to dig into it, and we really didn't see it in our data. Only 0.2% were doing more technical strategy, 0.5% were getting their hands back on the keyboard. So this idea of like the player coach and the tech lead role becoming more important didn't come through in our, in our responses. Doesn't mean it didn't happen, but generally it looks like the roles and responsibility of engineering leaders hadn't changed that much, even though the size and uh, scope and shape of their teams had changed a huge amount. So that's it from me. This was just like the highlights from our report. You can read the whole report. Um, there's a QR code there, there's a bit.ly link. Um, but I just wanted to give you a little insight into like, what we were seeing and how it was playing against these headlines that all of you had read. Lena is now going to do a little bit of a deeper dive on some of these areas. But thank you so much for your time, and have a great Lead Dev New York.